20 years ago today, construction work started on the Newbury Bypass. Despite massive protests, it brought drivers relief from Britain's biggest traffic bottleneck. But it also shifted public opinion about new road building. Each night this week, the reporters who covered the story two decades ago returned to reassess the legacy of the Battle of Newbury. Tonight, our transport correspondent Paul Clifton looks at how the protesters changed government policy. A climber working on the route of the Newbury bypass has been knocked unconscious by a falling tree. You may well be arrested. Please go away from me now. Though the bypass itself may now be open, there are still many months of work ahead. Work on building the Newbury Bypass has finally begun. The Newbury Bypass changed the way Britain looked at road building. We're a lot more organised now and also there's just huge amounts of support here. Rebecca Lush was arrested three times in one week. 20 years on, she still believes the protests turned public opinion. Newbury was absolutely critical in changing British transport policy fundamentally. There were 600 road schemes proposed initially by the Thatcher government. By the time Labour came in, in 1997, the road programme was scrapped completely. So by anyone's standard, that was an enormously successful campaign. More than 800 people were arrested using 600 security guards. The cost, one-fifth of the total price of building the road. Long after the battles ended, the road opened at two in the morning on a foggy Tuesday. In a few moments' time, the Newbury bypass will be opened. Only a handful of people knew to keep protesters away. We've got rid of the notorious bottleneck on the A34, so it's, it's good news all round. The last time I interviewed you was 20 years ago, the morning the road opened. What did the Newbury Bypass change? The protests at Newbury undoubtedly helped to focus attention on making sure that the environment was a very key priority in, in subsequent road planning uh, projects. Personally, I had to put up with a lot of abuse and threats. Fortunately, they were, they were just threats rather than physical uh, violations. Um, so it, it was a stressful time and I look back and uh, with, with some pride that we were able to deliver a bypass that has achieved a great deal. Here's what the landscape looked like before the road was built. Alongside it, the Newbury Bypass today. The protesters lost the Battle of Newbury, but did they win the war? In the 20 years since then, the only big new roads in the south of England have been the Hindhead Tunnel and the Weymouth Relief Road. One of the biggest protest camps was at Tot Hill. Today, the battle site is a service area with a hotel and McDonald's. We've taken three years and spent £120 million of taxpayers' money to move a bottleneck from the south of Newbury to the north of Newbury. In 1996, Adrian Foster Fletcher was among only a handful of local business leaders to oppose the bypass. Sadly, we still have congestion at peak time and that was a key reason for building the bypass. And as George Osborne thinks about improving infrastructure in the future, he should take that lesson to heart and say, all this CO2, all these emissions, this is not the way to go in the future. The bypass uncorked this road as the country's worst traffic bottleneck. It also virtually halted road building for a generation. Only in the last two years has the government once again started a new era of laying tarmac. And mostly, that is about improving existing roads, not creating a new route, as they did here. Paul Clifton, BBC South Today, Newbury.